Okay. Let's do this. Hey there. This is my story about riding the SoCal Desert Ramble in Southern California. I'll start by saying that this is one of the most beautiful bikepacking trips that I've ever experienced. There's a nice mix of terrain, including washes, a bit of single track, isolated dirt roads, a jaunt through Joshua Tree, and even some high alpine. Oh, and Slab City is definitely worth a visit. The ride is 500 miles long. There's some solid elevation gain, totaling 30,000 feet, and bikepacking.com rates this a seven out of 10 on difficulty. The route starts in San Diego and finishes in San Bernardino near Los Angeles. I rode this on a hardtail with front suspension, my Priority 600X, a dream machine that I designed with my friends at Priority Bicycles. What makes it really special is the Pinion and Gates low maintenance drivetrain. If you'd like to learn more about this bike, I've shared some links in the description. If you wanna watch my complete in-depth experience on this route, I made an entire series which I will link below. In this video, I tied together all the best moments and left only the natural sounds, exactly the way that I experienced it when I was out there. And if you're a fan of adventure and far off places, I have tons of videos from all over the world on my channel. Please help me out by subscribing. And if you really wanna keep this channel going, consider joining my Patreon. Okay, that's enough blabbering. Let's get to the adventure. It feels really good to be here by the ocean. It's calming for sure. And I'm also grateful just to be here in the warmth next to the Pacific Ocean. I'm a Colorado boy, you know that. This is pretty special for me. Ah, oh, yes. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. All right, there's my beautiful Priority 600X all dressed up. Let's go. Let's start this thing. I'm ready to pedal. Open over some mountains and into the desert and sleep under the stars. Let's go take one more look at the ocean. Check this out. Woo. Yeah. Getting closer to getting out of the city, I think. I love this bike path. I'm in Chula Vista, heading into the mountains. Oh yeah, look at this. Going up a little hill, I'm feeling good. I'm getting further and further away from the metropolis. Yeah, 
there's no way anybody's riding up this thing. Deep here. Look at that awesome tree. I'm a big fan of trees like that. That's the kind of sign I like to see. Okay, so it looks like I'm definitely going to get wet here. <laughs> Check it out. That's uh, a lot of water. Uh, oh God, oh, it's so, it's so deep. Oh God, I'm gonna regret this. Oh my God. Whoa, this is actually pretty strong. Oh God, come on. Oh. Oh. Well, if it was like middle of the summer and I knew it was going to be super hot all night, I wouldn't worry about my shoes being wet, but they're going to be wet for a while. <laughs> and this is where I'm heading, right up that steep area. What's up, Shadow? How you doing, bud? Uh-oh, we got some dogs coming and they look angry. Hey, 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 leave me alone. Hey, get out of here. So I just got off the road. This is the route now and it turned into a super steep, rutted out trail. It must have gotten a lot of rain recently. Maybe that's why the river's raging. What's up, Shadow? Just a little bit more. camping the sun went down it got cold it was I couldn't find any camping I asked some people went to a bike shop they said yeah not happening I'm so cozy <laughs> and I think this is the best part of the room all right it's peanut butter Nutella time on a tortilla mmm it was pretty darn good so I just looked at the weather for Alpine and uh oh this is no good high wind warning Santa Ana winds coming in from the desert and uh, 
you know, we'll see how bad it gets. So far right now it's manageable. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Just got to smile. That's all I can do. That's the best way to fight wind is by smiling into it. breakfast in my mouth. You can see the big buildings of downtown San Diego. trail I'm on now is tucked in here a bit, which is nice. It's blocking the wind. Wind is back <laughs> in full force. wind has chilled out a bit and I've just got my head down I'm thinking about life all the beautiful things you know when I come on these rides it allows me a lot of time to just think think about the people I love and what I love and you know I have Thanksgiving coming up in a week and I'll be home for that and there's always a lot to be thankful for Oh boy. And sometimes it's just easier to walk.
I don't exactly know where the trail's gonna go, but I have to go up and over those mountains right in front of me. Not bad. Nice view up here. give you an idea of where I've come from. I've been riding that little skinny trail right there and over to there and now right here. Ah. So I have a feeling when I get to the top of this mountain I'm gonna get demolished by the wind. <laughs> This trail is much flowier than the last one, which is nice. The other one was full of rocks. Who put all those rocks there? So I'm at about 5,000 feet above sea level. Yesterday I was at zero and it's a lot colder up here. Here we go on the Borrego. Just got my first view of the Anza Borrego Desert. It looks nice down there. Beautiful. This is a, yeah, technical here. Damn. Ooh, that sun feels good. Crazy. I don't know how any vehicle could deal with this. <laughs> There's a lot of loose rocks and it is steep. Ugh. Ah, it's a lot warmer down here, which is nice. 
The sun has set. There's a little bit of sun left on those mountains right there. And I'm pedaling hard because on my map it says there's an RV park with hot springs. And I would really, really love to jump in some hot springs. It also says that it closes at sunset. <laughs> so I'm trying to get there before the office people leave. Okay, I made it to the RV park, which is great. But the bad news is the hot springs are closed. I got here a little bit too late. Ah, what a bummer. <laughs> ah, life is funny. Here I am sitting at a picnic table in the dark, about to eat my favorite beans, Amy's refried beans. And check this out. I even have a little bottle of Cholula. Oh yeah, get a big old fatty burrito. It is 6.30 p.m. and I'm about five minutes from crashing. <laughs> Today was a day. It was hard, it was long. I started at 6.45, ended at about five. The single track uphills were very difficult and certainly the wind did not help. That was some serious wind. I thought we had strong winds in Colorado, but the Santa Ana's maybe, maybe even stronger. Buenas noches, mi amigos. Good morning. It's about 5.45. It's still mostly dark. <laughs> mm -hmm. Buen provecho, amigos. Food always tastes better when you're outside. Nice little head bob there. Bop, 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 bop. Bop, 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 bop. This is a great place to sleep. Thank you, soft piece of sandy ground. Alrighty, let's go. Ah, the sun is up, the sky is blue. Looks like it should be a nice day. All right, my friends, let's have another beautiful day on planet Earth. No flatties, no crashies, no whammies. <laughs> And today, I'm gonna to be heading through a wash called Canyon Sin Nombre, which means the canyon without a name. And uh, that should be a good adventure. And then I'll head up towards Borrego Springs. Well, all right, here's my turnoff. I've had about 10 or so easy highway miles. And I'm taking a turn into the dirt, a sandy wash, Canyon Sin Nombre. And this is about 20 miles. And depending on the conditions of it, it can be very slow and sandy. If there's been rain, it might have packed it down. I have no idea what the conditions are. But uh, time for some adventure. Here we go. Woo -wee. Reminds me of the White Rim. Just a little sand surfing. Oh God. At least it's downhill right here. Oh yeah. It's definitely deep. I have 2.4 inch tires, which is a little wider than the average, which should help. But yeah, this could, this could be the longest 20 miles of my life. We'll see. Oh God. Whew. So I'm gonna let some air out of my tires, which should help with traction a bit. If I can stay to the side, it's a little harder. The sand is all out there where the cars go and rip it up. Very reminiscent of the Baja Divide. 
Oh, I'm getting deep right here for sure. Okay, okay. Whew. Oh. Come on. Come on, buddy. I can only hope that the conditions will get better. <laughs> or maybe they'll get worse. I have no idea. You know, this reminds me of the very first time I did the Baja Divide in 2017. That was my first ever bike packing trip. Up until that point, all of my big adventures had been on pavement. And then I hit the Baja Divide and hit the sandy stuff and I was like, oh my God, this is so slow. This is excruciating. <laughs> and it really took a while of riding the Baja to realize that, you know what? When this kind of stuff happens, you just embrace it and you just, you just go slower. You know, most of my trips, I'm used to just hammering and going fast, but sometimes you just can't and fighting it does not make it better. So this is one of those moments where I'm just gonna be going slow and that's okay because this is where I am and I have this whole place to myself. <laughs> Wow, look at that. Ooh. I'm being aided by the fact that this is all downhill. So momentum is taking me through. Once I have to go flat or uphill, that's gonna be a lot more difficult. Wow. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is like my own private canyon. I'd be surprised if I see anybody today. We'll see. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not so easy. I feel like I'm on a Star Wars planet out here.
And it's amazing to think that yesterday, less than 24 hours ago, I was riding in the Alpine mountains above San Diego. This couldn't be more different. Oh, here we go. There's some sand for you. <laughs> oh, okay. Going into an Ocotillo forest. These plants are beautiful. I love them. This is the sandy sand. Oh man. Check this out. Open expanse. Man, that's stunning. So there's a reason why I'm doing this in the winter and why everybody does it in the fall or winter. There's nothing out here. And in the summertime, forget about it. It would be insanely hot. Like even right now, I don't even think it's 70 degrees and it feels pretty warm. <laughs> and now we're gonna go down this steep, steep, choppy road. <laughs> I'm in another little canyon. <laughs> it's amazing how many roads are out here. Four wheelers definitely get after it. I think there's a lot more of those than bike packers. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Ah. Woo. Come on, buddy. How you doing, Shadow? Keep charging, bud. Keep charging. <laughs> Look at that. It's pavement. 
I'm psyched to be here. All right, I'm about 15 miles from Borrego Springs. Once again, I'm racing sunset. <laughs> it's gonna be a close one. It sure does get dark early here. And this area really holds special meaning because I think it was this road in 2009 that I pedaled on when I rode the cruiser bike across the country. You hear how quiet it is? All you can hear is my little twirly thing spinning. Okay, so I'm about five miles outside of Borrego Springs and I rode by this American Legion and I saw some RVs set up and I thought, you know what? Maybe I'll stop and ask them if I can camp here because the last two nights I've been getting in at dark and I would like to have a little bit more time to chill. So I stopped by, $5 camping. They've got water and food and all sorts of good stuff. Thank you, soft piece of ground, and thank you, American Legion, for letting me stay here. This is kind of hilarious. Here's some subtle desert art. It looks like Wiley e. Coyote on the road here and a giant blood stain across the highway. I already ate this morning, like 45 minutes ago, but I can't pass this up. Look at this gigantic bean burrito from Los Gilbertos. I'm excited. I just stopped at this mega gas station. Look at all those stuff they have. They have Cinnabon, Pizza Hut, KFC, Yogurt Land, Taco Bell. What? They have it all. But you know what I got here? My favorite Mexican cookies, the Principes. Now I'm on this rowdy highway for a bit. Luckily I have a nice wide shoulder. Hopefully the cars are respectful. I'm heading down towards a town called Westmoreland, and I hear they have amazing shakes made out of dates. So let's boogie, 30 miles away on this thing. All right, I made it to the date shake capital, west of the Mississippi, no less, and I'm really excited about this. It is so good, it really is fantastic. It feels like summertime out here. It's very warm and there's lush fields. I think of alfalfa being grown. And right now I'm heading straight toward the Salton Sea. I am kind of close now to the Salton Sea. Back in the day, it used to be big and it probably came all the way up to right about here. 
This area is an interesting story. In 1905, it flooded and it was a beautiful sea. And then developers were like, oh, this is cool. We're going to build up a Riviera and this is going to be a place for all the Hollywood, you know, big money people to come and, and live a luxurious life. And I think that happened for a time, but, you know, the water <laughs> has been receding and receding and receding and there's not much of a sea left, just a tiny, tiny bit. All right, it's 3 p.m. The sun over there is going down and I need to start looking for a place to camp. And it's not gonna be at this factory, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, thank you. See that right there? That's my room. I haven't even gone in yet. I'm not expecting a whole lot. I'm just excited to uh, have a safe place to stay. And it's right there in room number three in Nyland, California. You know how to make a peanut butter Nutella wrap deluxe? You throw a banana in there. Here we go, no crashies, no flatties, no whammies. Off to Slab City. I've been excited about Slab City for a while. And all of the art that I'm about to see. So there's a lot of different art, at least from what I've seen online, but the most well-known one is Salvation Mountain, and it's right here. Oh, this is fascinating. It looks like a post-apocalyptic movie set. So here I am riding along, wondering what I'm doing here. Nobody's around. And then this very happy smiley face comes out. It's Dr. Spencer. How you doing, my friend? Hey, I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day. We got a little wind, but the sun is shining. It sure is. We're in Slab City, and we get 350 days of sunshine here. What do you do here? Well, I plant uh, right over here. If you'll take a, a gander over here, you guys. I have over 6,000 plants. They're botanic. It's a botanical gardens. I've got uh, seven different types of spinaches, five different types of kales. I've got bamboo from all over the world from Burma, from Thailand, from Vietnam. I grow all, most all of my vegetables that I eat right here. And wow. last summer I put in a swimming pool. <laughs> I've got a solar oven. That The solar oven is big enough to cook 12 large pizzas at the same time. <laughs> and we have amazing dinners here. Hello. I like this. The Galactic Please Patrol. You could spend hours, days in this entire city checking out everything. There's so many little intricacies everywhere and most things just 
put a smile on your face or make you think about something differently and make you appreciate the beauty that artists put into all of their creations and uh, yeah, it's all good. Like this. Look at this little alien speeder bike. Yeah, kind of feel like I'm in Star Wars out here. And right next to East Jesus is Dot's place. Dot, how you doing? Pretty good. How are you today? Doing great. Yeah. Um, what's the story with your installation? Well, just like a lot of other people, the desert inspired me to create artwork. And I've made kind of like an art camp. We call it Amazing Art. Just kind of, <laughs> when you travel around and you look through it, you'll see how it's a bunch of trailers kind of mishmashed around each other, looping on each other, and each one has installation work inside of them. Like this one that you're going to explore called the Skeletrarium. That starts with my uh, mummified mermaid and then moves into all sorts of bones and weird whatnots and things that I've collected out here. Yeah. And then some of the other trailers have like books in them or the taxidermy yeah. owner party, so pretty popular one too. Why yeah. do you think this area in specific is, inspires artists? I, the desert air. Yeah. It's got to be the desert air. Yeah. And just like the freedom, the, the vast expanse yeah. of, you know, being able to see so far and I don't know, it's just inspiring. Yeah. Yep. And you're always adding to it, I'm guessing? Oh, yeah. 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 I've been it's here four years, over. and I'll just keep adding and keep adding and keep adding until I'm completely bored with it. <laughs> Very yep. cool. All right. The taxidermy dinner party. <laughs> oh, look at this. <laughs> so sometimes you wake up with plans, and then sometimes those plans change, especially when you're on an adventure. I came here in the morning thinking I'd spend a couple hours, check out some art, and continue on about 65-ish miles, but then I met Dr. Spencer, fascinating human, loving human, kind human, my kind of human, and uh, he's like, just stay here, and the itchy part of me was like, oh, I gotta keep going, I'm on a tight schedule, I gotta make the miles, and it took a while to be like, you know what, I'm okay with it now, like this is what life is all about, this is what being the boss of me is all about. I can take a day off and explore a fascinating place and connect with a wonderful human. And that's uh, what I've done. And so I'm gonna stay here in this little RV back here and I'll get up tomorrow and ride hard. How's that sound? And I would have had like a 20 mile an hour headwind all day. So it would have been a miserable day of riding that way when instead I've been hanging out here having the time of my life. My heart is happy. This is why I travel. This is the exact reason why I travel, to connect with amazing humans. And uh, I'm really happy to have met Dr. Spencer. Buenos dias. This is where I slept on this open air mattress right here. Super comfortable. Well, I really appreciate all your kindness in uh, meeting your smiley face warmed up my day yesterday and I stayed the whole day because of it. That's fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. man. Yep, yep. Yeah. You have a good one out here in the desert. I love your little piece of paradise. Yeah. It's a good one. Beautiful, beautiful. Have a good trip. Thank you. And uh, watch out for the big rigs. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, my friend. Bye. Goodbye, Church of Enlightenment. That was an amazing 24 hour stay. We shouldn't have as much headwind today. And I'm feeling good and rested and my heart is full. No crashies, no flatties, no whammies. We got three dogs running over to say hi. Hopefully they don't do anything. Hey, 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 get out of here. Get out of here. Woo. Woo.
somebody coming. So as I'm bumbling along on this road, I'm thinking back to my conversations with Dr. Spencer back there. And he said something that was really poignant and simple. And he said, if you don't like something, change the way that you think about it. So in this moment, my initial reaction to this road is I, I don't like this. This is hard and annoying and it's slow and it's making me tired. <laughs> but if I take his advice and change the way they think about it, you know, it's great. I get to go slower. I get to enjoy this longer and uh, I'll end up where I end up and that's where I'm supposed to be. And you can extend that thought to lots of things in life. You know, if you don't like something, just figure out a way to flow with it. Doesn't mean you have to like it and force yourself to smile or something, but just to look at things in a different way. You know, throughout my life, when I would conf be confronted with the challenge, I would used to tend to fight it and force it. And that only affected me negatively. And now I try to look at other solutions to every problem and the other positives of when things are hard. And I always have to remember that I get to be out here. I get to ride my bike. I have a body that's strong enough to do this and the time to take off and go spend 10 days out here. And that is such a gift. And it's Sunday, what else do I have to do but pedal? That's pretty awesome. This is a good spot to chill, what do you think? Nobody that way, nobody that way. And as slow as this road is, at least I'm not on that busy highway on the other side of the Salton Sea. That was kind of nuts. Out here, all I can hear are planes flying overhead and the sound of my tires crunching gravel and my jaws slowly gnawing on hard cliff bars. <laughs> Look what I just found on the ground, free food. It's a lemon. Mmm, bitter. Oh, woohoo, ma'am. That'll make you pucker up. And these palm trees behind me right here are date palms. One of my favorite things about Southern California is that there's great Mexican food everywhere. I just got a bean and cheese burrito, a quesadilla, chips and salsa with fresh salsa from this area, and a Fanta. That's where I'm headed, up into those mountains right there. Ole, 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 ole.
Here's my turnoff that will take me into Joshua Tree National Park. I won't get there today because I'm going to go look for a camp spot pretty soon, but here we go. So, uh, these aren't fireworks you're hearing. <laughs> this is uh, like a target range. I'm pooped and this looks flat even though it's full of <laughs> shotgun shells. <sighs> I think I'm good. All right, I'm all set up. It's crazy to think that this morning I woke up in Slab City, completely different world from where I'm at now in Gun City. <laughs> Whew, what a day. It really was a beautiful day. I say that every day, but man, it's just a privilege to be able to ride a bike and that's all I got to say. So I thought they'd be done shooting guns in the dark but they seem to keep going and this is going to be real annoying if this carries on all night i hope they run out of bullets <laughs> i tried to get far away most of them are down further so i came up but there's a few rascals up here just shooting guns and drinking beer Thank you, nice, soft piece of flat ground full of shotgun shells. You know, I understand shooting guns, but why litter the natural world with all of this junk and plastic? I mean, this is a wasteland out here of refrigerators and lawnmowers and stuff people are shooting at. <laughs> it's so weird. Anyway, I'm off. Gonna have a great day. It's beautiful. Heading into Joshua Tree. So I camped at about a thousand feet above sea level and I'm going to be climbing today up to about 4,000. Got a little bit of uphill to do, but that's all right. It'll warm me up. Can you make it? Well, yes, I think I can.
I'm finally seeing the famous Joshua trees. They're pretty cool looking. They look like something out of a Dr. Seuss story. All gangly and, well, you know, just different than the average tree. Okay, I had to lean my bike up against one of these Joshua trees. It's like school picture day. <laughs> yeah, looking good. Gotta check out these rocks, these jumbo rocks. I don't think I've ever seen a landscape quite like this. I've been to the desert, many different deserts, but these piles of rocks everywhere, really. That's something new to me. It looks like a giant came and just dropped them all. <laughs> Thank you, Joshua Tree. That was a great day in a new national park to me. I made it. Pioneer Town. This is wild. It definitely looks like an old Wild West Main Street. I love when things work out. I was hoping there'd be room to camp here. They have a little campsite called the Corrals and <laughs> there is plenty of room. And I'm gonna be right behind the mercantile. Whew, and it's gonna be chilly. I'm already cold. This is the coldest I've felt on the entire trip. Ah, it feels so good to be here. All right, I got my igloo set up. I put the rain fly on tonight to keep heat in. I think it's gonna be a little chilly. I just watched the informational video in the museum and so this place was founded in the late 1940s by Hollywood guys, even Roy Rogers, who wanted to build like a Wild West set for their movies so they didn't have to travel so far to Arizona and stuff and this is what they built and a lot of the old timey movies were filmed here and still to this day there's a lot of modern commercials and stuff filmed here and music videos. I know this is all fake, it's not a real Wild West town and it's kind of cheesy, but I love it. I love cheesy stuff. You, you know me. <laughs> it puts a smile on my face. Oh, it sounded a little weak. It's cold. So today I'm heading up, up, up to the snow-capped peaks and then Hopefully down into the backside of LA. What? Oh yeah. A little uphill to warm up the body, warm up the core. Feels good. I'm gonna be going a lot of uphill today. Up to about 8,000 feet.
It's time for my morning thoughts. And I always do my best thinking on the seat of a bicycle. It's kind of meditative and I've been out here riding for seven straight days now. And I'm really grateful that I'm here right now in this moment. And I get more in tune with my body and just the sounds of nature and birds overhead and the sounds of my tire slipping through sand. <laughs> you know, bike creaking here and there. It really is quite special. And then when I get home from a ride like this, I feel recharged and I feel like my heart is bigger and I'm more loving and caring and compassionate which is always a good thing, right? And when I'm on a bike adventure, it really forces me to be hyper present in the moment at all times. And when I'm in the present moment at any time, that's when I feel the most alive for sure. I see some white stuff on the top of those mountains over there. Oh, the air is crisp up here. Ah, tastes like Colorado. Riding through some icy, slippery patches here. I imagine with just a little bit more snow, this road is completely impassable. I lucked out. Hi there. I was riding by this hotel, Fireside Lodges. And it was one of those spontaneous moments where I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go there. And so I'm sitting here loving life. You heard me talking about gratitude this morning. Well, I'm very grateful to be here right now. And this is my Thanksgiving gift to myself. And of course, my bike is right next to me. It has to be, right? Look at that beautiful sunrise. And look at that cold snow. Okay, thank you, amazing bathtub and bed Ooh, yeah it's cold there's no doubt i am at a ski resort and people are skiing today It smells really good out here. You know that pine needle smell, Christmas tree smell? That's what it smells like.
Oh, bummer. All right, nice day for a walk in the woods, I guess. Good news is I have all day. Okay, some of this is packed hard enough that I can ride it. It's kind of like riding through the sand. Ooh, well, that's slippery. Yikes. Well, the good news is there's no way I'm gonna get hit by a car out here. <laughs> it's actually not too bad. The snow's pretty hard. Easy to walk on. Vroom, 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 vroom. <laughs> Going top speed here. Man. It's like sledding. Yeah, buddy. Whoa. Look at that view. Woo. That's where I'm heading, right about there. Yeah. Hey, who put this tree here? <laughs> I can't bunny hop that high. Yeah, good job. Okay, carry on. Well, I thought I was done with you, Snow. Back in the sun. Oh boy. <laughs> I might be getting wet here. Uh, the snow has turned to water. Yep, bit more uphill here. It's not a free ride all the way down. Pretty, it's pretty down there. Every time I think I'm near the top of whatever I'm riding up, it's not, it just keeps going. <laughs> and the worst part is, there's all these little flies that are following me and they're biting. <laughs> I need to go downhill to get away from them. 
but there just isn't any downhill. That is quite the wall of rock right there. So I just looked to my right and I see this and I'm thinking, is that a mirage? R for Ryan. Look at that. Los Angeles. Steep. There's the dirt. There's the pavement. I finally made it. <laughs> Today was way harder than I thought it was going to be. I figured, seriously, three hours to go 45 miles downhill. That's pretty reasonable, right? But man, this took almost seven hours. And it was beautiful, and it was fun, and I got to reminisce about how wonderful this adventure has been in so many ways. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. I'm full of gratitude and thanks. And now I'm here uh, in LA at some, uh, they're going to be building some cookie cutter houses here it looks like. <laughs> you know, it's, it's fitting that I pop in on the edge of LA. And I'm not here alone. This is really, really the best part of today. I have a new friend, Woo! Dave. How you doing, buddy? Doing good, doing good. And this is Karen. Hey. And uh, they came to say hi. They knew that I, I was in the area. They brought a bike box so I can pack my, box, my Absolutely. bike. Absolutely. And this means so much. And we have a cute doggy too. Look at the cute doggy. Oh no. You want to be on YouTube? You want to be on YouTube? Thank you so much for being here. This, is, this is amazing Absolutely. to have a little welcoming committee. It means the world to me. Oh, can we go get some bean burritos or something? Absolutely. All right, let's get some bean burritos. <laughs> oh yeah, look at this. And look at that. Ah. <laughs> Hey there, my friends, check it out. I wrote a book and I'm really proud of it. It's called The Long Way Home and it chronicles my very first bike adventure from Honduras to Boulder and how that journey led to a life of being an adventure storyteller. I'm really excited to let you know that it is for sale now at doozerbook.com. Also, I printed this in my beloved hometown of Boulder, Colorado in the most eco-friendly way possible. No trees were cut down to make this book. And check it out. If you don't like all the words, there's even photos. So go on over to doozerbook.com and pick yourself up a copy. I promise you, it'll put a smile on your face.